So let me get started with the first uh, um, question. I'm going to do, let's see, if I do copy and paste, I wonder what it does. Yeah, I don't think uh, I have um, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, I'll just leave in this text, and I think uh, ChatGPT has been actually okay with uh, ignoring a uh, text that have um, reference to image. So let me put that in as a question, see how ChatGPT answers it, and then take a look at it. I have a feeling that it'll probably um, answer it correctly. It's the kind of question that ChatGPT actually does well a lot. So I asked, explain why. Bright emission spectral lines have an identical position, identical wavelength to the dark absorption spectra, give one significant effect about, uh, yeah, it sort of uh, quantized the energy levels, um, which is what it should be bringing up. Let's see. Emission spectral wavelength, atoms move from, yeah, electrons move from higher energy lower than absorption, same on dark, at the same as yeah, these atoms. Are, yeah, yeah, it acquired the same amount of energy to excite the electrons. Yes. Uh, crystal quantum mechanics, right? Discrete energy levels, right? That's the thing. Um, yeah, that, that's a good answer. It's the kind of question that ChatGPT does well. So, um, oh, so question two is basically three questions put together into one. Let me just ask one at a time. Um, is there a shortcut for submit? Is it enter? No. Shift enter? No. Control enter? I don't know. I'll just click, click the button. <laughs> I, I guess I can try alt enter. Let me try alt enter next time. Uh, traveling at the same speed. So proton should have shorter de Broglie wavelength, which uh, momentum, mass and velocity, right? Uh, wait, did I mistake it? No, so, <laughs> I don't know, you missed. So it gave you the correct formula. Wavelength is Planck's constant divided by momentum. So greater momentum means uh, means a shorter wavelength. Because proton has greater mass, it should have greater momentum if it's at the same speed. So proton should have shorter wavelength. And it somehow got this, uh, I mean, it got everything else right except for this small mathematical part. Um, yeah, because yeah, I think uh, it misunderstood the question. Uh, the question specified that they are have the same speed, but it looks like uh, the portion of training text it used is uh, sort of assuming that they have the same kinetic energy. Yeah, in that case, let me just uh, show you the version of the question where ChatGPT could be right. So, one second. So this is the version of the question that if this had been the question, ChatGPT answer would have been right. So uh, let me rewrite uh, the de Broglie wavelength this way. Lambda is uh, h over p. And momentum can be related to kinetic energy through this formula. Uh, momentum squared over 2m. So replacing this uh, p with p that I solve for here, what it would be is um, h divided by square root of, um, so 2m goes over there, 2m times kinetic energy. Oh, maybe it doesn't work out that way. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I don't think it even, even there it works out that way. So that's the expression. So in the version of the question, where if we say instead of their, they, they're being at the same speed, if we say they are at the same kinetic energy, even then I think uh, higher mass means a shorter wavelength. So, um, yeah, this portion is just, uh, I can't quite imagine the version of the question where this would have been correct answer. So, yeah, I mean, this is kind of a uh, it's a, it is, this kind of statement is one that ignores a lot of potentially complicated factors because uh, really you have to fall back on the original mathematical relationship. Planck's constant over momentum, not 
speed. So, yeah, so, okay, ChatGPT got this wrong for a really weird reason. I, um, okay, it's just wrong. <laughs> I can't imagine a world where it could have answered it correctly. Let's uh, look at the next question. So the answer is uh, no, unless the acceleration itself doesn't affect it. Now, as its speed changes, it's a uh, typically wavelength would be shorter, but, um, whether it's accelerating or not, its speed will still uh, be yeah. inverse momentum. Yeah. yeah. So the particle is accelerating. Yeah. Velocity and momentum are changing. So to that to the to that degree, the Broglie wavelength will change. But uh, there, in the formula itself, the acceleration itself doesn't come in. Um, uh, but this is wrong. Because if a particle is undergoing uniform circular motion, its velocity is changing, but its speed is not. So if we are looking at, um, so if you are looking at wavelength as a just a scalar quantity, you know, wavelength being h over p, then as long as the absolute value of p isn't changing, wavelength isn't changing. Now there is a concept called wave number, uh, called h bar k as a vector. Um, that can include the directional aspect of momentum, but um, we are not dealing with that. <laughs> and they don't, if that's what they're referring to, they should say uh, something called wave number specifically. If they are not saying wave number, then this is ChatGPT just making mistakes with the more advanced modern physics content. Um, yeah. yeah, so velocity can be affected by acceleration, sure. Um, but what it says in this paragraph is just wrong. While velocity is changing direction, the magnitude of momentum or the magnitude of wavelength won't change. So it's, I'm going to say it's wrong. Because, <laughs> you know, if you are an AI, you got to be perfect or, uh, or you're wrong. <laughs> it's different from human beings who can actually learn. Uh, AI doesn't actually know anything, learns nothing. Why is the wavelength not easily observed? Because the the wavelength, the Broglie wavelength would be so short. Um, as mass increases, yeah, it's inversely proportional, much larger. Uh, so yeah, wavelength becomes very small. Uh, nano, yeah, it's actually. So if you have like a baseball moving at really slow speed, it's like ten to the minus thirty meters uh, for its wavelength. So it becomes absurdly small. Uh, like nanometers would be uh, actually really long. Um, and, 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 um, uh, sure, this isn't wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, the kind of interference effect, you do have to take care that it doesn't get washed out. In fact, there's a way to kind of understand the uncertainty principle that I think we talk about towards the end of this week and more next week. Um, there's a way to kind of interpret that. Uh, Richard Feynman in Feynman Lectures on Physics has a really good treatment of that. Um, uh, he actually covers it in volume one uh, when he talks about the uh, double solid interference. So, all right, so it got one out of three right for question two. So I'm gonna round it to say it got question two wrong. <laughs> Let's see. Tiebreaker, question three. Uh, uh, I have a feeling ChatGPT will get this question right. It's the kind of question that ChatGPT does well, which is a kind of open-ended question that um, that you know yeah, that just uh, requires you to pull some facts that you can easily look up in Wikipedia. So yeah, or semi-classical model, or maybe, you know, quantized disk. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's the result, not the starting point, but that's fine. I like to make high and we could jump down to it. Yeah. Okay, I like properties. Right. Um, uh, huh. It's just repeating the first. Uh, maybe it's not going to get this right. Let's see. Oh, wow. Huh. Oh wow, it actually got it wrong. I'm surprised. So what it should have gotten is that um, if you assign the orbiting electron 
wavelength consistent with the de Broglie wavelength, then the circular path of the electron, the allowed energy levels are when you have the uh, when you have standing wave. And in fact, I think if I follow this link, uh, one of the sections here will actually give that description. So let me see to uh, make sure that it does that. There's actually a um, or not? No, yeah, maybe not. Because if they're using proper um, fully full quantum mechanical treatment, this is simplified. The picture won't be here. Huh? Huh? Maybe that's why it's not in ChatGPT's training text. L let me see if it's in the textbook. Because um, I, I mean. If it's not in the textbook, I know one place where I can get the visual for you. So let me just do that. Um, so within the textbook, it would be um, six point. Uh, let's try this six point five. Deborah wavelengths. Um, Yeah, yeah, it's this picture where, um, so this is the kind of connection between the de Broglie hypothesis and the Bohr model, that um, the energy levels that are allowed, orbits that are allowed, uh, happens to be the ones that form standing, uh, uh, standing wave. So, yeah, I, I am super surprised that ChatGPT didn't get that right. It's the kind of question that I've seen it well. So, okay, it missed the two out of three questions. So... I'm rounding it. It didn't get the conceptual questions right. <laughs> I don't know. If I seem happy, it's because I am. I, uh, I mean, again, I think I said this last time. Um, I can imagine a future where ChatGPT is actually a good learning tool. It might be a kind of like an automated tutor. Right now, it's not there. It makes too many mistakes. It's like an automated tutor who's not good. <laughs> so... Um, so, so as long as it's uh, more valuable as a cheating tool rather than studying tool, I kind of want it to be bad. So. <laughs>